minutes, Adam Farkas back with you here in Denver, Colorado at the AOA annual meeting. And with me, I have Dr. Clark Chang. Hey Clark, how's it going? Good, how are you, Adam? Great. So I think there are a few different angles to look at it uh, in terms of why cross-linking matters. So number one, since we are so accustomed to dealing with this is a frustrating disease, speaking of keratoconus and ectasia, right? So we know that it robs our patients of their quality of life, uh, of their lives, not just their vision. And we also know that because it's a progressive disease and up until this point, nothing can control that or predict the rate of progression, they constantly get frustrated with our treatment option being very transient. Right. I can give you a great pair of glasses, uh, specialty contact lenses, and they may last for a few months to possibly a year until something changes with your cornea. Now we have to redo the whole process. It's frustrating for both clinician as well as your patient. Mm -hmm. And over time, I, I feel like that is one reason why we often think pa keratoconus patients are really tough, not just anatomically, but also in their communication style. And right. I feel like we have to take some responsibility about it because right. we haven't really had access to stop the progression of their disease. So that's one. Number two, if you survey a lot of recent medical literatures, a lot of literatures are turning up way higher prevalence rate of keratoconus patient. Yep. So no longer do we think it's possibly one in every 2,000. Right. It's probably, it's a, some papers are saying as high as one to, one, one to every 25. Uh, that's obviously, uh, <laughs> wow. I think it, we have to kind of obviously make our judgment in terms of what kind of methodology do they use sure. to screen and come up with the, and come up with that criteria. But I think safe to say that it's, a, it's very likely a lot higher than one in 2000. So as a primary care um, provider, we are perfectly positioned in catching these patients, especially in a group of disease where we used to think to, uh, to be a much more orf orphan state, mm -hmm. a much less common type of disease. Now we know that that's likely not true. So that's gonna make an impact to our practices as well. All right, well, Clark, thanks so much for this great information. I hope it was useful to everyone, and I guess this conversation will continue online. Absolutely, thank you for having me.